Dr. Martin, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? And let's everyone join us. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. At this time, uh, I'm going to ask uh, our Chief Financial Officer, Austin Lucas, to come forward and address us uh, with the business of the this first session. Guys, hear me okay? Yes. Good evening, board members. Good evening. So I'm gonna try to hit a couple of high spots on our FY25 budget here and answer any questions that you have. Um, I'll just read a little statement here about the budget. So it's a comprehensive budget for FY24-25. The budget attempts to represent a conscious assessment of needs within the constraints of the revenue approved. Budgets are at best statements of priorities. Displaying funds by program and function allows the board, community, and staff to understand how the system spends its educational dollars. This budget request represents a balance of fiscal restraints with the commitment to continue the quest for excellence in Lincoln County Schools. So you got a big packet. There's some graphs and stuff in there I'll touch on. There's a summary page probably on the second page of your document. I'm going to kind of read through it and then I'll hit some of the graphs and maybe a few specific line items within the budget and I'll try to keep it short. You guys can ask questions as you have them. So the first fund is fund 11, which is our general fund. Uh, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but total revenue budgeted is a little over $44 million this year. Last year it was a little over 40 million, which is an increase of about $3.4 million. This is primarily due to having to use some of our unassigned fund balance monies to cover staff overages, because as you know, we're still over funding primarily to loss of students again. Is that mostly in teaching positions or teaching and uh, service yeah, personnel? Kind of split between both. Okay. Um, I think it's mostly service personnel now since we've had to add a, quite a few aids and yes. different things based on requirements. Uh, beginning fund balance, um, which is unassigned, this means it's not committed, is about four and a half million dollars. Now, this was the last audit numbers, so the year we're ending now, we don't have those numbers to project. So this would have been budget. this yeah. time last year. Yes, this would have okay. been for this time last year, and we use those numbers to balance the budget. Okay. Regular expense levy budgeted at two point four million dollars. That's down about three hundred thousand compared to the previous year. Excess levy budget, 2.9 million. This is down about 300,000 as well from last year. <clears throat> All of these are due to a decrease in countywide property values. And, and you guys were presented that information back in April. There's some discussion about the values. Or, you know, we're not really sure what's going on, but it seems that the values are down and they really should not be. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure about that. We've, we've contacted various organizations to check Austin, and this see might what be a good time for me to interrupt and, and interject something here uh, i've given each of the board members and the superintendent a proposed letter to send to the tax commissioner uh, i've been in touch with the assessor basically and and i look at a six hundred thousand dollar shortfall of county revenue mm -hmm based on what the assessor is giving us. Uh, our overall tax appraisals was down three, four million, something like that overall. I look around, I don't see any decrease in either. business, homes, I anything see. else. I see nothing to Three's cause that. To you. So I, I have given the board members this letter at proposed letter to and I would like to have your office general agreement <clears throat> to send this to the state tax commissioner asking them to take a close look at what's going on. Uh, I've talked to the assessor and he says, yeah, we're aware of this. We've been talking to the state tax people as well. Uh, I've been talking to them as well. And uh, 
we just can't get a handle on it right now. It might be a computer problem. It might be this and that. But uh, he says, you're going to have that $600,000. I said, well, can you give me something to guarantee right. that? Theory. And he said, well, I, I can't right now, but give me a little time. But uh, I think as a safety precaution, we need to send this letter or one like it to the state tax commission or just having them take a look at it. Uh, I'm sure there is just some logical explanation, some error in computation, perhaps even some computer error somewhere along the line. That's a lot of money. You're yeah. just kidding. And uh, I, I, I would like to get the board's thoughts on whether we should do this or not. That's yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Put, put Lincoln County Just well, that's going to go on letterhead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask Robin if she would to type that up on school letterhead and and I'll sign it or she can stamp my name on it. Well, we should we'll put like all the board, board members doing it. Yeah, we should put all the board members on there if we've all agreed to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you need a motion for that, Dave? Uh, no, it's not on the agenda for a motion. I just think a general agreement with you all nodding your heads that would be able to do that would be yes, fine. Yes, I think does, that's does, does Frank, do you see a problem with that or yeah, I think anything? We we're not that. going over the assessor's head. We're actually doing exactly what he's doing and what I've been doing on phone calls as well. Uh, I've talked to Thalston. He's put me on a couple of interesting websites to, to take a look at. Uh, we just need to find out why there's such an error. I could Something, understand it. Something's that definitely that off. There was a. Uh, had lost something major. There were some oil and tax valuation issues there back 2018, 2019. That was statewide. Those appeared to have been remedied, but, you know, that could be an issue. There's various things it could be, but if we're going to take that action, that's a step in the right direction. I, well, I think that letter also shows that we're doing our due diligence. Yes. As we're making sure that we're leaving a paper trail. Anyone, yes. that's, anyone yeah. that's lived from 2019 to 2024 knows that the Nobody's property, property values have gone everywhere down. have increased. <laughs> they have have down. Down. That's what, yeah. Mr. Lucas, are you aware statewide of any other reason that across the board there would be? No, I've, I've asked some of our some of my contacts and uh, there's very few counties where the valuations are down. I mean, I think there's like three out of 55. <laughs> we're not so one we're, no, we are one of them that's down, which is. Oh, odd. we're down, but yeah. but the evaluations that go to our citizens are not down. It's, it's a, yes, uh, and th yeah, yeah, same numbers. Yeah. yeah. The, what, one of the things that happens here is is just uh, the inability to be on top of the game. In the, in the last three years, we've had three different assessors. And during that period of time, uh, you know, things happen. Uh, nobody's had a chance to really get their feet on the ground. You got to remember these people who are elected to assessor's positions yeah, aren't professional assessors. Right. They're citizens who step into a role and learn a job. And for three different assessors in three years, there may be a continuity problem of how we do things. So I just want the state tax department to take a look at it. Good idea. Yep. It's a good move. So the next line is budgeted state aid revenue, 20,400,000. You'll notice that's up about a million dollars from a prior year. So, you know, you might say, well, we have less staff. Why are we getting more revenue and, and various questions like that? Um, most of it is due to the fact that the state did pay raises. So if you have 30 less people, but everybody in the county got between yeah, right. $1,500 to $25, there's a balance there that it doesn't actually well to we have less people, we're going to pay less. and. We're going to get less revenue and we're going to pay less in wages. Same thing you'll see in the bigger packet. When you get to wages, you'll look at it and you'll say, well, why are wages kind of flat? Well, you might have less people in that line item, but the people that are still there got a pay raise. So that, that's 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 how that's worked out. So that's the gene general ideas and revenues in Fund 11. Fund 61 is all of our special projects, grants, state, federal dollars. So on these, the directors that manage those grants give discretion on how they plan to spend that money and 
uh, future expected amounts of those grants. So all the grants you see listed here are very close in revenue compared to previous years. And in my experience so far, those have stayed rel you know, relatively close over the years. Last line item is the child nutrition budget. Budget for child nutrition is down about 141,000. So we are now getting full reimbursement for all of our meals at 100%. In the past, we have only got 95%. So that will lessen our county contribution to the food service line item, which is a good thing. Next page is a graph on the general fund budget revenues. I've touched on this in a prior meeting, but you'll see that we are very heavily funded by state aid revenue. Regular levy, excess levy, those account for about seven to eight percent of our budget every year, each each levy. Then you have a line item for local funds and contingencies. The majority of that money is that fund balance that was carried over from prior years and it gets lumped into that column. So local contingencies being carried over. Various, various local dollars. There's a bunch of different reasons and places those funds come from. Could be donations, could be various places, but yes, the majority of that fund is a balance is a fund carryover. The next page is general fund budget expenses by function. So that's where you'll see instruction, support, school administration, which is your principals and your secretary, central services is the central office building, maintenance of facilities is at all schools, student transportation is of course all schools. Special education is where you'll notice the biggest jump in our budget over the last three years. Our local contribution to special education has skyrocketed. I'm not going to touch on any of those reasons. There's there's a lot of discussion there. Um, the next line item is transfers. Those are transfers due to and from different funds. For example, transfers to the excess levy fund are included in that amount. All the all the dollars that we break out the teacher levy, instructional levy, retirees, whatever line items those are. And then there's about six percent that. I have listed as miscellaneous. It's quite a few items that I didn't feel that garnered a percentage that I have more detail on if anybody would be interested in my work papers. The next graph is general fund expenses by object. So this is a little more detail on where we spend our funds. You guys are well aware that the majority of that is personnel, wages and benefits. Maintenance of, of facilities is about 5% of the budget. Student transportation, 3%. Supplies and equipment, about 400,000. And this is that same transfers and contingencies number that you've seen on the previous two, previous two slides. So I don't think there's a need to go through each individual line item in the budget, but in those other line items, there's many of them. There's about 30 pages of them. Each line item has a title, so it'll have a it'll have a project code or a fund and it'll say levy teachers, levy instructional, for example. So hopefully I sent this out on Thursday, Friday. Hopefully you guys have had time to review that and, and in, on an individual line item basis. So again, I'm not going to go into those details. I oh, said so when it says like unrestricted other, uh, what what is some of the things that 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 would that we would be paying for under unrestricted? Which other? page are you on? Uh, page one. Page one at the top. Which line item? Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. To say unrestricted six. projects. Uh, uh, it says unrestricted other. Dot, uh, gov. It's a. Uh, Oh, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. About the, the tenth, yeah, about the middle, number ten. Um, that's interest, bank interest. That we pay. No, that we that, receive. That we receive. That we receive. Okay. Yeah. So, if you um, over the last several years, we've collected quite a bit of interest on the money in our bank accounts because of. Well, various reasons. I'm not going to get into political reasons, but when interest rates are high, bonds and treasury bills and things like that, the rates increase on those. You know, you'll see advertisements for CDs and higher rates at six, seven percent now, and 
2015, you saw those at 1% or half a percent or something that you could barely even notice. So do we take the month like as as we pay our people on the 15th and the 30th? Do do we leave that in that account and we take it out just before we yeah, pay? Yeah, we transfer. So we it. get to keep that. I try to keep as much money as possible in that bank account, okay. and I try to do our transfers at the not the last minute, so to speak, yes, but as but, late as I can yeah. for accounts payable and for payroll, and also for um, when we do funds requests on yes. our federal grants. The quicker we get those in, the more interest that we receive. Yeah, the longer we get to hold it, yeah. the more. And, and we in. we definitely need that interest yeah. that we are collecting. So I'll, I'll tell you guys, like I tell our directors here in the building, we are on a spending basis of necessities. Yeah. We we have no wants at this point. Duval has the school has taken. Pretty much all of our budget and there's a lot to be our earth there and the building's not started so just keep that in mind we we've spent i think mr hoover and i have spent about a week with his tech team trying to figure out how we were going to purchase ipads to replace all of our whole devices so you know i thought we were doing that's that hope is money well we are but that's not the that's not the main concern the main concern is two three four five six years down the road oh, okay. having the money to when we have that money no more to be able to replace to, yeah, we basically we basically spent a week trying to devise a plan for the cycle that's happening four years from now. And, mm -hmm. you know, most people think that, you know, they're they're working on next week or three months from now. And it's like Mr. Barnett and I told the SBA when we were trying to fund Duval, we were voicing some other concerns and they basically told us that those concerns didn't matter, that our first priority was Duval. So we're trying to prioritize that stuff on a four or five year basis. But yes, you are correct. We're trying to use any leftover COVID funds to replace those so, so that we're not spending county dollars to do so. Um, and we're also trying to not to get too far off subject, but we're trying to see if we can encompass some more of our HVAC related work at Hamlin into those COVID funds on a project that's already approved some things that we left out in the beginning because we didn't know how much money we were going to have when we got to this summer. and for various reasons, you know, we're, we're, at, we're at the point right now where we're trying to pay open purchase orders and close what we're not going to spend so that we have an accurate number come August. We have X amount of dollars left in that fund. We can purchase X amount of additional iPads. We can do X amount of HVAC work. So, so taking care of some of that preventative maintenance and capital expenditure, especially at Hamlin, will, will help us in the future. So. We really yeah. need this six hundred thousand dollars coming. Uh, well, yes, we do. We we we're, we we have some money, but we're trying to plan for times when we don't, uh, and okay. we don't ever want to be in that situation. That's right. Thank you, Austin. Does anybody have any other questions for Austin? No, but thank you. Yep. Thank you I'm very much. Available anytime. Thank you. All right, that brings us to item three, finance, uh, adoption of the proposed budget and levy estimates. Do I have a motion? I move. Martin makes the motion. I'll second. Burn second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And it's unanimous. Brings us to adjournment of the special session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Wilson, Snyder. Mm -hmm. The time is... 619. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we are now adjourned of that meeting and we're calling to order the official board meeting at this point. We will skip the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, public comment. I'm assuming we have none. Uh, which brings us to recognition. Mr. Barnett. We have a lot. That's a good thing. It is a good thing. It's all yeah. a good thing. So, uh, we uh, we had some folks there last week, and and I got the names from your administrators. So if, if something happens, goodness gracious, God forbid that if I leave somebody out, we will get you taken care of. But I don't think we did. So we're going to start with the Golden Horseshoe winners. Are they here tonight? You have one, okay. All right. We had we had uh, the county had two Golden Horseshoe winners or three actually. Um, so if I could get them to come up, please. Um, Sydney Kyer. How about that? First try. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. 
And from what school? Thank you. Yeah, she's from right here. Hard work. Okay. Thank you for your hard work. So she'll, there were actually, I don't know, when's the nighting ceremony? Have they told you? June 11th, there'll be a nighting ceremony uh, where they actually get their golden horseshoe pin. And uh, so this is all West Virginia history. And we're very now, proud. where will that be? That'll be in Charleston. Yep. I'd, I'd like to know what you know when it would be. Today. Yes, I would like to go to that. And uh, just uh, throw a little plug in there. My my former school was uh, who built the nighting bench, so they were the winner of that contest and built the nighting bench. Uh, next was Addison Saul, Addison here, and Reed Roberts. All these students have uh, won Golden Horseshoe and will be receiving those awards in Charleston. So we're very proud of them. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Who is very the first good. settler in West Virginia? I don't know either, but the name <laughs> Morgan Morgan strikes me as familiar. Is that, is that, that sounds good. <laughs> we also had a couple of Skills USA winners that were at the middle school level. Uh, when we presented last week, we did the high school ones. I don't know if they're here tonight. Kara Reynolds. Where is she from? She's, they're both from Hamlin. Okay. And Abby Johnson. Both of those are Hamlin students, and they were uh, with, uh, I believe it was Urban Search and Rescue. All right. All right. And let's see. There. Then we got his last week. Okay, and we also have some uh, a couple of students who received their uh, received their West Virginia FFA state degree, the very coveted position. One is Mikey Stowers. He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> Jordan Sampson. I just saw Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. All right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to Jordan. <laughs> All right, and this JROTC robotics team. Uh, Anna Buckholz, did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> and robotics team as well. Uh, builder engineer Corey Cheeks. And then uh, the last one is coder and driver is Michael Stickler. Now, we have FFA state degree, Jordan Sampson. I thought I just saw Jordan walk back in. Maybe I'm drinking. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, we also had uh, FFA also competed this week. So, uh, uh, works here. So, uh, uh, can I say something? Sure can. Um, so, we took two teams to the state contest. They competed in marketing. Um, and that team has to actually put together a marketing plan, budget, and presentation. Um, I want to let you guys know they were 15 points from a perfect score. Um, they did Mr. Wilkerson's Christmas tree farm, um, and they received second in the state with that. And then we had our Ag Issues team. Um, also, guys, they received a 147 out of 150, so they were three points from a perfect score, and they received second as well. And they topic was preserving West Virginia's farmland. Oh, wonderful. Right. Well, that being said, we'll start with the second place marketing team. Uh, first one member is Talon Rimble, who just happened to walk in. <laughs> Can I figure, get your thing? So, Kaylin Pridemore. Also, <laughs> well, and Mikey Stowers. Also, got to say about FFA, I've never seen a group of kids so tickled to death to wear a corduroy jacket in 90 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> They're proud of it. Proud of it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, Agriculture Issues Team, Haley Dunlap. Uh, 
okay. per person. Melissa Adams. Adams. Melissa Adams. We need to get Johnny to take some pictures when they do the thing. Wayne Reynolds. Castle. And board members, I really enjoy this type of evening when we're able to recognize the hard work these students do. And I want to make this part of every board meeting next year, a student recognition course. Today. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's at the end of the day, no matter what we do, it's about them. Absolutely. So that's what I like to do is be able to recognize them uh, at every board meeting, one group, every board meeting. So did I leave anybody out? Mikey Barker. Oh, where is Mikey? <laughs> right here. All right, come on up. Thank you. Back up again. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you're very welcome to stay, but some of you might not find this uh, too exciting. But if you if I can get all these winners to come up, yes. get a picture. Oh, yeah. Winners, that would be yeah. great. No. Okay, good. Board members, you want to stand up? Yes. Right. Uh, we don't even stand uh, on time. No, we can sit well, They can't see yeah. me anymore. Got your little part. Oh, yeah. That was a sweetie. Thank you all. Right. Thank Good, you. Job. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Guys. We're proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. Very proud of all you young people and and your parents as well, who support you in your endeavors. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Chief, care. Can I say something? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. So, I, don't, I don't mean to do this, but I just want to tell you what a great job the JRTC team did. Now, just some of the statistics. They was they went to state uh, qualification up for Fairmont, right, in March. They did a really good job, and they qualified. They were selected to go to national. Now, all this nationals, only 136 teams, JRTC got to go. That's over 3,000 programs mm -hmm. with Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. <clears throat> so out of those 3,000, like I said, there was 136 teams. Out of our brigade region, which is over 300 schools, we was one of three. Wow. We was the only West Virginia JRTC team that got selected and qualified for the nationals. Wonderful. So that's that says a lot about them. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. About Absolutely. Yes. I'm, I'm really proud of them. Yes, it's yeah. wonderful. So I get emotional on that stuff. Well that's cause I, 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 you cause you care. <laughs> but I also wanted to give a special thanks to Steve Gaines. If it wasn't for him we wouldn't have been able to go. Mm -hmm. He he stepped up, he gave us the funding, no questions. I mean as long as I did my paperwork and kept all the receipts and did my part, but a special thanks to Steve Gaines if you can Absolutely. if you could let him know. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, I wanted to wait for it to clear out a little bit because I know I'd get emotional. But I wanted to just say what a great great job these kids have done. There's nothing wrong with that. And they're a brand new team, brand new team. They get to go to nationals, so, you know. It's so wonderful. Are they underclassmen? Well, they're one graduating and is graduating oh. this Friday. They're stepping up. They'll be seniors next year. So we should we could keep them this Friday. We want to keep you this Friday. Are you graduating this Friday? Yeah, Anna here. You're going to graduate this Friday. Yeah. Uh, are you going to go on to do what? Oh, wonderful. I, wonderful. You yes, just the good work. Yes, I followed the ROTC program yeah. through college and became a pilot as well. So I know what you got ahead of you. <laughs> you can do it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Well, the important people are gone now. Well, we just this is really right. exciting. Yes, it's this. No, oh, this is wonderful. And I know that Mr. Major, Major is retired, so it sounds to me like we've left the ROTC in a pretty good place. 
<laughs> this guy stepped up. Yeah, he seems very, very interested and on the ball, doesn't he? Yeah. This is first year? Second, I think. Second. Yeah. He's doing a good job. Yeah, he's doing a good well, job. Expecting big things well, next year. And right. Seth, you've done a wonderful job over there in your. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Hats off to the kids. They they're the ones that stepped up and did it. They started. Brooke and I got together and we just we was like, hey, these are some contests that are available. Do you want to do it? And not a whole lot of kids like to speak. Mm -hmm. These the contests that we did were speaking contests. Were they? So more or less, they. Uh, the marketing team did um, uh, the Wilkerson Christmas Tree Farm. So they had to market the, the farm and how to do that. And then uh, um, the Ag Issues team was like, it was a discussion, a, de a debate. So they had to speak in front of judges. And it's, I'm, hats off to them. That, it, it blows my mind. Right, they must have done pretty well. Oh, that Issues team. <laughs> That's great. So, they, they jumped in with both. That's great. Good job. We'll, we'll expect again next year. Yeah, that's great. Yes. Presentation. Our educator writing program. All right. All right. Faith Lindell. Third place. Third place. Yes. Wonderful. And delivery. Great. STEM. Great. So now my question to you is, before I let go of this, are you going to come back to Lincoln County? Yeah. Right. That's, that's the best. <laughs> And in fourth place, I'm, I'm going to, after I read these names, I'm going to give these to you. Okay. Oh, you can send them in one. Um, I'm getting at the national level, so I'll see all of them. Oh, there you go. Well, all right. Congratulations to you as well. Yeah, very proud of uh, you. Kara Atkins was second place, teacher creative materials. Tammy Seitz, second place, teacher creative materials. Holly Justice, second place, lesson planning, delivery. Shana Redmond, second place, public service announcement. Caden Thompson, second place, public service announcement. And Rory Watts, second place, public service announcement. And Erica Sally, third place, children's literature, pre-K division. So all these kids, they've done a, a, a great job. Yes, uh, Ronnie has done a fantastic job with these guys, but they're really knocking it out of the park there with, with the Educator Rising program. Hopefully they just rise enough to come right back here. Later. That's exactly right. We want them to come back. Appreciate them. They've done a really good job, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of their instructor. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck at National. Well, that's is that uh, DC. Yeah. Where did you go? Yeah. Oh well, we'll be praying. Good luck. We've got a group <laughs> going, going to DC. We have a group going to Texas. Uh, all competing nationally. So that says a lot about mm -hmm. what's going on with yes. the student organizations. I'm really proud of. There's nothing. These uh, CTSOs for the CTE programs. Is it? Uh, they're wonderful. Just, uh, I can't say enough good things. They're they're kind of for, for these kids. It's their varsity sport. Yes. So yes. and they're really doing a good job with it. I appreciate it. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Got one picture, honey. We have I'm standing right here at the board members. Absolutely. Let's stand over here. Come on, Dave. Come on, give him a stand up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Barnett. Has all of these been publicized? They have. They have. Yeah. I think I've read all yeah. of them in the paper. Mm -hmm. just and wanted then, to be sure. And I put them on Facebook. I just didn't. Congratulations. Uh, yes. Are you going to do, so you do secondary education in elementary? I think I was. Oh, elementary. yeah. That's where it's all at. Yes, it's that's important. <laughs> Thank you. We're so proud of you. Okay, that concludes all the presentation. It does. All right, we uh, got the one I've been really looking forward to. Joni Shortridge is going to come up and talk to us about iReady results. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so in your um, packet, you should have, um, it looks like this, it's a handout of the already results, and I was just going to go step by step with you. It's so our focus has been K-3 this year. We've, I mean, I'm sure you're probably even tired of hearing me and everyone else talk about it, but the Third Grade Success Act, Early Literacy, Ashlock Intervention, all of those things. So I think that really shows in our data um, because our teachers had asked, they were so involved in this 
intervention. They bought in principals, teachers, you know, everyone at the elementary levels. So they had asked us to extend our benchmark deadline, meaning when our kids would take the last diagnostic because they really felt like they were going to see some growth and some good results. So that's why you see kind of two bands is we extended it. It typically the window is typically in April, but we extended it to match or mirror what um, three through eight when they were taking the GSA. These kids took the already. So they took it kind of like they would take the standardized test. Um, and I I felt like that data looks pretty good. And when, was when was it? Yeah. Um, so this this window closed on like May 12th. Okay. Right. So yeah. we, we really got almost a half month or maybe even a month. Yeah. Yeah. Not not as, um, you know, they had about a month longer yeah. than what they typically yeah. would have had. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, so with that, if you look, you know, when I first presented, um, we were around the 20s um, at the beginning of the year for where the kids were as far as on grade level. Sure, Do you need me to stop? interrupt you sure. for a second? This is Jordan Sampson. She uh, she got her FFA state degree. So I wanted to make sure that we recognized her before she got here. She, she you were out doing something funny or something. Yes, she <laughs> was. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> But she's really done a good job with the, with FFA and, and continues to do a good job. And uh, I think one of the first things I did as superintendent when I got here this year was go over to her house and look at all of her rabbits. So she's really, really done a good job. We're proud of her. So I just want to make sure we recognize you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one, one more picture, board members, and we'll go back to that. We're so proud of you. Thanks. You can just stand right there and we'll scoot together. Come on, Dana. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. <laughs> and so what what we ended up seeing was um 65% of our K2 students are reading on grade level. So that's pretty impressive. The other thing I wanted to point out is that we move that band. There's there's 30% of students that are not even a grade level behind. So when you add that together, that's huge. Yes. That's huge. What I'd like to bet, look, we went from the first time you saw this data, we had about 30% that were in the red. We're at 4%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our teachers have worked really hard. They've been diligent. Um, Shout out to Miss Dion to Miss Lucas. She's there. We're constantly monitoring and trying to provide support. Miss Sarah Dunlap, you know, it takes a team, and the principals have really bought in, and the teachers have, you know, I mean, they they're seeing the results, and now they're really buying in. So, uh, it's great for our kids. I look at the numbers again. You've got three hundred and seventy-five on grade level or above. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've got 201 or more grade levels behind. That's, if if memory serves me correctly, that's a drastic increase. Yes. From where we were at in January. Yes. Uh, I, I commend you for that. That's, it, yeah, it's a, it's the team. I take no response. You know, uh, take I no. Everybody. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Barnett. Uh, it, it's focus. Uh, I, it, it's the intervention that takes place. Yes. And that's wonderful. Uh, you know, it, it, I'm looking forward to next year when we start intervening from day one. one. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, I just, you know, six out of 10 kids being on or above grade level is good. Not good enough, right? But it's good, right? Uh, it's progress. Really good from where we were at. Mm -hmm. So I, I commend you. I'm looking at the individual schools here. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Duval again, K through T, K through two, and you've got 64 percent on or above grade level. Uh, Guy in Valley's no results there. They're because it's they K2. Yeah, they right. yeah they're on the next yeah. page. Okay. Yeah. Uh you got 
64 for Hamlin. Mm -hmm. You've got 66 at Hearts. You've got uh, 73 at Midway. Wow. You've got 46 at Ranger. 56. 56, pardon me, 56. And you've got 64% at West Hamlin, that's uh, that's moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I commend you. I can't wait till next year. Well, and then what we've seen, where we've seen so much growth and what we've realized when we really have broken it down is that kids in three through eight, where we lose them is the breakdown of vocab and comprehension, which you, you start instead of learning to read in third grade, it's reading to learn, we lose them. So what we've realized is we need to bump up our intervention for that as well. So fourth and fifth grade will now also receive the same intensive intervention that K3 have have had all year, um, but it will be with the focus of vocab and comprehension, which you can see that based on the domain breakdown in your next report, that's where we're losing them. And then they eventually fall further and further behind as they pass through school. So that's one of the things we've already decided as a curriculum team. The other thing is that our special ed kids as well are not growing like we hope. So we've added co a corrective reading program that's, that ties into Ashlock. It's through our Wonders program, McGraw Hill. But what that is going to do, we hope, is catch those kids up at a much quicker pace than maybe a typical modified curriculum. So they'll get intensive intervention in the special ed middle school classroom and elementary classroom, as well as they'll get a modified curriculum that we're working on um, as a team, um, you know, so that we're exposing those kids still to grade level standards. Six week course. Right, it's, it's every day, no matter what. Every day. Yep. So on the, you mentioned special ed. I, I'm sure Mr. Snyder will agree with me. We used to be in our our time. We would, if a kid was failing in school, we did not have any mechanism to provide the remediation. So we would test them. They had average intelligence, but their achievement was not mm -hmm. up there. So what did we do? We placed them in LD classes so they would pass. Mm -hmm. When they got in the LD classes, what did we do? We never addressed their intervention, their weaknesses. We just gave them less work. We demanded less. Mm -hmm. Even though they had the intelligence to do it, we demanded less. Yeah. So they they fell farther behind and we injured their education instead of actually providing education with that identification of LD. Right. And uh, even though we called it specific learning disabilities, we never identified anything specific. So, uh, well, I used to tell my kids, you know, you have to work twice as hard, but you can do it. And we're, you know, we're going to do it. And I feel like that has to be our motto right now across the county is we've just got to work twice as hard and then we'll get there. We've got the right, right approach. I am so thrilled with, with what you all are doing here. I, I just think that we can do this. Teacher. And the things they're doing in the classroom, it's top notch. It really is. Well, I think one of the reasons is that you all have taught them what they need to do in that classroom with those children. And maybe, you know, years ago, we didn't have that. Everybody went to the same milk toast, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. things that we needed to do. and went back to our classrooms and did what we've already always done and we're starting to not do that we're starting to look at kids where they are and where we can take them yeah and miss lucas you know i can't say enough about her and her early education yes. background and things yes. that you see and things and i piggyback a lot on her and her ideas when we work together so that's the way it needs to be yeah she's um She's been a driving force with the Ashlock. I go to her if I if I don't know the answer, usually she does. So kudos to her too. Well, I think that with with this team, with Joni's team, it's not about show. Uh, it's not about tell me. It's they're, they're about show me and do. Yeah. Show and do. Yeah. yeah. So I'll give I'll give her credit too. I don't want her head to swell. Down. No, not too bad. It's not me.
Supervision well, is essential absolutely. in any program. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Supervision. What you Fidelity. look at is what is done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really is. It's what you look at is what is done in the, in well, the classroom. I commend the previous board of education for having foresight to latch on to the iReady and the Ashlock programs. Uh, we have a plan. Uh, they're solid plans from what I see about them uh, there. We're actually teaching kids uh, on their level to improve. And I just, uh, it's an overwhelming task, but I, I see no reason at all why our kids can't be achieving at a much higher level than this right. with the approach that we're taking. So I, I would urge the boards that's coming up in the future to stay the course with iReady and Ashlock and, and avoid a temptation to do something else. This is just plain. Sometimes not being flashy is the correct course of action, and, and there's nothing flashy about any of this. Uh, I think as I think the previous administration and the previous board were on the wrong course when they were using iReady results to give the appearance of, of achievement, schools doing high, whatever. Uh, that gave the appearance, but it wasn't really attacking their weaknesses. So I, I, I just think this is the right approach. So. And consistency and stay with the program until exactly. you learn it. Not yeah. change like yeah. you used to every, yeah. every year. It, or even sooner than that. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we have a lot of principals too that will say, I hope you're not getting rid of this. We're not changing anything. Right. You know, we're just trying to add a little, like add as far as grade levels or things like that. Because they can our, see it. Our principals, um, you know, they drink yeah. the Kool Aid, so to speak, too, when yeah. it comes to all of this. They see the, they see the they improvement. See and that's encouraging. It is. You know. Okay, one other thing here is, is you need to get on the channel, educational channel. You need to break this down to celebrate our successes on that educational channel in such a way that the parents that, can understand that it. parents and kids can see what we're doing. Uh, we need to brag on ourselves and also point out that it's not good enough. But uh, this is this is good news. Yeah, this is good news. Yeah. So. Um, our three through eight is not um, as pretty, but I would like to point out that we did grow 11 percent from the last time you saw. Um, there's a tw we're 29 percent now. Um, on grade level, we did move that yellow a little bit more and and decrease that red quite a bit. We are moving kids. You just didn't see quite the growth because there's more gaps. Yes. So um, if you look, there was a 42% group of th three grade levels or more below, which is, you know, uh, worrisome. Mm -hmm. But then we've decreased that by 10%. Um, we've moved those kids and we continue to move, bump them up so that we have a growth of 11%. Um, you know, typically you see three to five. Uh, it's also broken down by domains, like I was talking, and where um, we've really looked at the phonics, the students or students with disabilities. So we were attacking the phonics with, like I said, that corrective reading program. The vocab and comprehension is um, more of your regular ed population. Um, so a lot of kids don't move after third grade, which that's when we stop Ashlock. So I do think there's a direct correlation. Yes. Um, so that's why we've increased that to fourth and fifth grade, and that will be the focus. So, are you thinking about moving them, like you say, to sixth with Ashland? No, we're at fourth and fifth right now, is where we're trying. Yeah. Um, and then we're six through eight in special ed classrooms. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Joni, I know the GSA has been embargoed, but do these numbers relatively close to the uh, like it won't come out till June. We can't even see their scores because they changed the scoring of the writing assessment. And that's 18% of the ELA score. Mm. So we can't see any ELA. I know a little bit of math um, and it looks very simple. Um, okay, if you follow look, me 
the, follow me through. See if I understand this correctly. Uh -huh. All right. On well, on the second page. I wanted to point out Lincoln County High School does it needs marked out. They only utilize it in the fall for IEPs. Oh, okay. I meant to take a like mark that out. Okay. I'm reading. Is that what you're referring mm -hmm. to? Okay. But well, for both DLA and okay. When we when we look at reading here for grades three to eight, we're looking at at Duval. Twenty two percent are on or above level. Is that correct? That's, That's at the end of the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got Dime Valley with twenty one percent. Hamlin with 31, Hearts with 40, 40, 40. take out Lincoln County High School. Uh, uh, Midway with 39, uh, Ranger with 25, West Ham with 34. Is that okay? Correct. Just making sure I'm right. All that is reading. Yes. Okay. Right. Let's get the math. All right. <laughs> so, um, math, like, I also see backing on the state they're rolling out the unite the numeracy piece this summer as well with household 3035 um with math what we typically have used for interventions is iReady. that's pretty much our math intervention it's um called tools for instruction there's a student model and a teacher model now so how far does that go up from grade levels all the way to eighth grade okay yeah so um that's pretty much what our teachers use uh -huh. um Title One teachers, I know, focus pretty. So they do that too, and then so they actually get two doses in the regular classroom, and if they go to in, the Title One, in some situations, yeah, okay. depending on the student. Yeah. Uh, so we had fifty-one percent of K through two that were on grade level or above. We had again forty-three percent that are less than one grade level, and five percent um, that's you know that that shrunk again significantly. Um, it's better. It's still not where we want to be, but again, it's encouraging. Um, and then it's broken now by school. So we're looking at a math countywide. We've got 306 kids on or above grade level. And we've got 297 uh, anywhere from one to three years behind. I'm encouraged again, we've only got one student that's three years behind. Uh, if I remember correctly, there were a lot of those in there at the beginning of the year. Uh, so it's, uh, that's an improvement. That's good. And for three through eight, um, we had a growth of 16%. We got 26%. Our GSA scores, I can't really talk, but it's a little better. It's a little better than that. Um, so, um, but we got, we did have a 16% growth. Again, 34% are less than one grade level below. 13 um, are the two. And then we have a little bit larger space there um in our three or more but it's still not what it was if you remember at the beginning of the year yeah, rate just three through eight is uh pretty bad yes. only 286 kids on or above grade level and 829 oh. one or more years years behind that's that's uh that's alarming. But we haven't, we really didn't do any interventions with these kids this year, did we? They they use iReady resources. So they do um, intervention either within the classroom and intervention period or while they're title teachers. Okay. Yeah. But so we, did, we didn't we, do what we did K no, through three. We're looking at a different model. No. Okay. Day, yeah. Everyone will have a daily intervention period. Yeah. Yeah, that's for next year. That's yeah, the plan. That's going to start next year. Okay. A walk the intervention, and that includes math, um, even at the middle school levels. So um, math and language arts. Yes, yes, because what we found is a lot of schools that maybe didn't have it in their period, or every 
every student didn't. What we really tried to have would be a universal period so that if we needed to move kids, we can in the intervention process. You got, you're looking forward to having that in high school? Yes, that'll be yeah. school. Okay. Yeah. So if we have to move, you know, if we have to move kids within within their intervention groups, we can do so seamlessly. Without having a whole new thing okay. have to start. Correct. Yeah, yeah, what we'd like to do because of teacher burnout and buy-in is also trade the kids and not the teacher. Uh -huh. For example, a teacher, if they really feel like they're okay. specialized in geometry, then they have a geometry group, and then it changes every four to six weeks. The kids, so they can teach what they're strongest in and yeah, what they feel most secure. Like yes. Yeah. Yeah. So That's every not, child will have a chance for intervention in both reading and, and math, math every day. Yes. 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 At every grade level. At that, least 30 that, minutes. That that does not include transition time. 30 so minutes. 30 true minutes. For each? No. Now, some schools have each. So, so, like, for example, Duval, they have two periods of intervention. So they have the ability to do ELA and math intervention. But other but, schools may just have one, and they all have to either alternate groups on days or if they're a corrective reading group, they would get corrective reading and math. Because they have other things that they have to do through the day. Yeah, which it really depends on staff. staff. We worked real hard with yeah. principals, and we yeah. even met with Jennifer Ashlock trying to get it all worked out outside it's just the box. Hard yeah, she's talked to each principal individually to try to work out a, a seamless schedule that's that will work so that every kid can get a, as much intervention as possible and still maintain the integrity of their schedules. Is that yeah. extra dose is what's going to make the difference. Have you thought about, I know, I hate to say this, but when we were at Ranger, we had the whole morning math and reading, and you just changed. Then the afternoon was the other subjects. And buddy, it knocked the bomb out of it. Do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we, we've had lots of conversations. Like one school had it at the end of the day, and I said, you know, I really like to see it at the beginning because that's the, First thing that goes it is, if there's yeah. an assembly or if the kids find out. And so principals have been great as far as working their schedules and, and really trying to fit the needs of the kids. And we didn't have just a certain group at grade level in that we had their their instructional level. Well, in our approach to it has been, you know, the intervention piece is a non-negotiable, but we'll work with you on how you want to work it in. Yes, and help them because sometimes they... Sometimes you get in that old grade level thing, you know, and when you start to do new things, you need some help yeah. and you need some training from the central office to do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, it's not pretty, but we do have some really good things happening, even in math. Hearts is blowing it out of the water in math. You'll see that when I present on GSA scores, uh, Hamlin too, and Midway. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are doing some great things. So. Uh, and we have pockets, you know, to every school, but just um, th there is some positives. When you really look at the school level, too, you know, overall, yeah, it, it is. It's not pretty still, but there are some really great things happening in schools. And we're moving. Yeah. In the right direction. Yeah. So you have some schools that I feel like you're, when, when I come in the fall, they're going to be above the state. Or even quit the, always, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. No. <laughs> I like to eat the whole elephant all at once. On the iPads that the kids have access to this summer, if they wish and their parents wish, are there programs that they can get on? Okay. Every kid should have received their brochures. Okay. You're on top of everything, don't you? <laughs> curriculum team we um developed this i didn't fold it but you get the gist mm -hmm. um so we did some little um activities math magicians is how we titled it and then some resources that kids can get on and they use their math brains on the iPads. reading warriors um is just a catchphrase we used that gives the parents some ideas some just general ideas of how to keep learning in the summer we also put in um the how to log in to iReady using a computer and an iPad. So if they needed help or support, um, we added some online math resources and online reading resources, just such as like Epic, which is free books. Um, we we contacted the local libraries, and so we put 
that information in because there are so many things that are free that happen in our local libraries that parents usually aren't aware of. Mm -hmm. And so we just gave some general um, activities that they they had they didn't have their schedule released yet. So we just put what we they knew they were going to offer. We just didn't have the dates at the time. Um, and then uh, we also remind the parents that summer school is never too late for summer school. So those are the dates and the locations. And just a reminder, it's free and that breakfast and lunch are provided. Um, one thing we're doing for summer school, we are as a curriculum team, we're all meeting next week. We're bringing in um, a representative from the State Department. We're going to do some PD on just basically what summer school should kind of look like to really reap the benefits. Um, so enrichment activities, STEAM activities, and then intervention. We're going to give them time and help them um, group kids that have signed up based on their needs and then help them gather resources for intervention for this summer. So what our hope is, is that they get intervention at least two to three times a week because you got to have a little fun too or they won't come. That's right. So they are going to things like the bookstore and things like that, um, thanks to Mr. Gaines. But, um, you know, we're trying to just get more collective and making it look the same kind of everywhere. Because all three locations, there's been five at times, they haven't always looked the same. And um, I just felt like that maybe made more sense. Okay. Don't forget the educational channel. This is this we're talking about that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we'll be on for that one. For that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions for the short job. bridge? Yeah. Great job. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Gonna, well, job. Thank, Thank you. you. I look forward to this next year when we have even greater results. Thank you, Ms. Downing. Okay. Brings us to the administrative items. Any discussion? Yeah, uh, I may have missed it, uh, Mr. Barnett, but uh, do we have a salary for the reading coach? Uh, um, I'm, I'm not sure that it was here. It's there. there. It's there. I just missed yep. it then. Um, Sorry about that. It's 80,000 plus fees. Now, <laughs> how long of the good of the. Uh, Calendar is that? Two ten. And how many are we going to have? One. Okay. And where are they going to be uh, located? So that's what we have now. Yeah, yeah that's what. Yeah, it's a change of person. But what do they do through the summer? They, they do the same thing that Joni does. Okay. They on providing the individual the models. Start working this year. She worked with them, going out with the schools and providing support. And working with them on putting in the intervention needed. So it's 80 pounds. Yeah. I, I must just have missed it. Okay. Um, is it on D? No, that's a social worker. While, while you're looking uh, on M, on uh, the campers uh, transportation, I'm assuming this is round trip or this is take them up and bring them back. Okay. Extension Okay. Uh, let's see. And you explained under Q that two of those have different numbers, but the, they have the same title, Correct. employment of personnel, yep. because they're different what now? In different categories. One's, one deals more with coaching, one deals more with uh, academic support. Okay. Yep. And uh, would you, um, uh, as I asked earlier, okay. we were talking, uh, would you just give a general synopsis of how Mountain State works with Lincoln sure. County Schools. I will. We work with Mountain State uh, Education Cooperative. It's basically, it's it's the uh, RESA 2.0. Because could. we'll yes. say the old RESA. Okay. So uh, we, we work with them and a lot of it's with, uh, we use for to hire positions. We do that, they do charge us a, a, a fee, but uh, when you look at it with their with their um, contracts, the way we, if, we, if we hire through the county, when it comes to personnel season, then there's you know there are different steps that have to be taken there. These mountain state positions are year to year positions, so if it comes down to the end of the year and the need is no longer there, that contract's done. Uh, we also use them for purchasing because they, they are cooperative. Right. Uh, we we use them there. We use them for uh, like for example, we have uh, this year I I did away with the investigator. I was paying an investigator a, a you know part of his salary. 
but as it ended up, Mr. Davis and I did all but one investigation last year. So we decided, we'll, so I contacted Leslie Tyree and said, can we use him on an as needed basis? If we have to have an investor, can we contract him hourly? And she said, yeah, absolutely. So we went from paying 30,000 to if we have to use him, 1,000. Mm -hmm. So to, to try to, you know, try to look at that. Um, the communications director, uh, like you said earlier, I'm the one in front of the camera most of the time, but you know, I've got a face for radio, but we give it a work anyway. But it's, uh, we do use him like he gets out in front of things a lot of times and will we'll give me a call to say, hey, just give you a heads up. Channel three is on their way out there for this. Um, you can take care of it. You just tell me and I'll meet you there and I'll take care of it. And uh, he keeps our web along with Cody, keeps our website updated. Uh, anything that we put out there on phone calls like with Thrillshare, he'll, he'll pick them up and put them out on our website to make sure they're covered. Uh, he will put things like this out there for us electronically. Look at, look at uh, so we, that's that's how we u utilize him. Our computer techs are all hired there through Mount State uh, because uh, we may, like this year, we end up cutting two out of that office. That's the money we have to pay. Uh, yeah, with with personnel cuts. So it's just it just it's a much cleaner approach to it, and uh, we get a lot of bang for our buck with it. It saves a lot of administrative, administrative time, time and, yeah. and costs. Yep. Frank, I, I just have to tell you, and I, I don't keep much from you, but when I look at like L, agreement with Mountain State to provide systems management services for $58,000 plus fees and benefits for a total of 91. That thousand. includes their insurance, that includes their retirement, oh, all the yeah. Yeah, but we're, they who's paying it? Well, it's right. Well, and it's just like anybody else. It's like yeah. any other employee. They get the same thing. We didn't yeah. have it broken down here. I just I look at this and I just think, oh gosh. Because we pay their health insurance and they retired. Same thing we would for any other employee. I just sort of am a teacher based seeing kids every yeah. day in their own school gone, person. All this has gone up since we were. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm also having them in the school every day. You know. And under F there. Uh, the memorandum of understanding. Uh, this is a flexible. Uh, how do you how, they just if charge when, something and you pay whatever? I mean, when we have a, we only have classes. Like we may have a class two times a year, okay. three times a year. Okay, where they come in, they do the the CDL training for them. The, so the, it's flexible as, as you need it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Go down to item Q policies. We tabled this from last week. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone through these. I don't know how much you all have looked to them or what concerns you have, but the one that jumps out to me is the weapons policy. Uh, I, I looked at, yeah, the green yeah, sheet. I looked at that and I went back and pulled the, our county policy. Uh, that we have on our website, whatever, and and they're basically they they say the same, but uh, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it last week, and I still can't do it today. Uh, it talks about in, in the first and second paragraph, basically, is uh, no arms, no no weapons. Uh, from employees or anybody on school property. Then we get down to paragraph three, says this prohibition does not apply to an individual 21 years of age or older who has a valid concealed handgun permit uh, while in a motor vehicle in a public school's parking lot, basically on school property. Uh, number one is you don't have to have a concealed permit anymore. West Virginia is an open carry state where you have a constitutional right to carry a weapon. Now, we can borrow weapons That's from our I'm, school yes, system, yes. but according to this policy and what we have in our county policy, they can. Uh, we're not barring anybody. Uh, from carrying a weapon, um, having a weapon in a vehicle on our school property. Now, I, I, 
I can't wrap my head quite around this. I don't know if I'm totally against that or totally for it, but it doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Uh, it does go on to say that it has to be in a locked vehicle, but it, the first paragraph don't even mention a locked vehicle. Uh, the fourth one says it's got to be in a locked vehicle and can't be visible. Uh, I, I don't know that this policy that we aren't, if we adopt this policy that we're saying, okay, you can. if you're 21 years or older, you can bring a weapon to school and keep it in your car uh, at a football game, any, any time, any parent, anybody that's not a school employee, we're prohibiting school employees from doing that, but, but we aren't else. prohibiting anyone else from doing it. Am, am I reading that wrong or? Maybe well, I we, think school employees can. Well, looks like paragraph two is uh, talking about in a, this, in a school owned vehicle. This it's why. In a school, in a school owned, owned vehicle. Not in, in a private vehicle. They can. They can't. They can. In their private oh, vehicle. Okay. So this it isn't is, just a school owned. This policy is adopted through NEOLA, which because of state changes in state code. Stop. State code. Uh, it was added to this. So we're just basically our policy is mirroring what the, the state, state code, code is. is. And the state code is on that last page, 61-7-2-11-11A and 14. So basically, the only has updated this policy to match changes in the West Virginia legislature. But do you all think we should be uh, permitting weapons? on school property no in in the in their vehicles no i mean i've had no i've had people bring weapons and keep them in school uh in in the car on school property because there wasn't any property address uh, policy to address that uh should think, we have I, a policy i think we should probably have our lawyer uh, that's what i think, I think we should, we should have our lawyer if, if we go against this Will we be breaking some kind of constitution? Yes, and if we go with it and something happens, right. we've we've approved it. We so we it. need to have our lawyer to come and address address us about this. People have a constitutional right to open carry, but not have it in their vehicle. But we can bar them from being on board property. That's exactly right. So churches can bar. That's exactly right, yeah. Donna. And who is responsible for the laws uh, on in school property? It must us. Have been under code. If you have a handgun in your trunk, which is locked, and then a box that's locked in your trunk, then you're good. Or in your glove compartment, and it's locked. But is that on school property, though, Don? On school property, yes. No, in your personal vehicle. Okay, well, if, well but I, we need to get a lawyer to tell us it either is okay to have it on school property locked in your car, or it is not. No, I asked what? what's the law. Yes. That's exactly yeah. right. I mean, I don't, I don't see a way around well, it. Well, we need to have our lawyer to come I, and tell us that in an open meeting and talk to and us about me, that. It, 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 I know Dave said we are, so we have a constitutional right in West Virginia, but this spells out that you must have, sounds like to me, like you do have to have that uh, um, individual so license that can still well be on that. So it yes. sounds to me like they're different in chain between they're two different whether things. it's a constitutional carrier, whether it's you're having your, your concealed right. weapons permit. Right. Absolutely. Right. I, I, I have that. I yeah. absolutely have that. And we need to get that straightened up and in that Maybe policy. That's you put it in that and that needs to be in there. Joe Blow. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Have, yeah. Just because you want it's to. A weekend training. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get our lawyer well, to I, come and talk to us about that. I have those that issue with that particular thing. Then if, when we go down to item D on that, talks about a knife, it, it's barring a knife uh, with a blade of three and a half inches or longer. Uh, I thought, and I couldn't find a policy anywhere where we're barring knives at all on school property. It doesn't mention any knife less than three and a half inches. Uh, that was a concern for me. I think it, what the clarif <coughs> excuse me, clarification there is, while we're barring knives, this is this item D carries to what is considered actually 
a, a deadly weapon in terms of expulsion. Yeah, well, we're barring deadly weapons. So we're doing that, but where do we address the knife? The knife where else? A deadly weapon. I bet a kid brings a knife to school and they get suspended probably, don't they? 43, 73. 73. What's the penalty if the kid brings a knife to school under that policy? That's less than three and a half inches. May. May. It's a may, not a shall. It's a may, not a shall. You may do this, you may do that. Uh, three and a half, you Ooh. shall do this, you shall do that. You can suspend, you can expulse. Okay, so we are addressing that somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Is that the same case with pepper spray? Uh, pepper sprays a deadly weapon. If you use it in self-defense. If you, if you, if I pull it out and, and say, you know what, I don't like Austin. And I see him in the hall and I'm passing and I'm spray in his eyes and I, it's a deadly weapon. It's a deadly weapon but, if it's it used it offensively. It's not. It's self-defense. Okay. So that's the way the law yeah. makes the distinction. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you think we've got all that covered under policy? We do. We do. Okay. One other thing while I'm at it, this is separate. You can read that. That's my concern. It says that with the term deadly weapon does not include pepper uh, sprays defined above when used by a person over the age of 16 solely for self to purpose. It says it right there on yeah, the yeah. page. Uh, Lord, and you got to be 16 to be 16 to carry. Yeah. Right. yeah. Lord, hey, Item K on this policy as well. Uh, I thought it was a little nebulous. I'm not sure I understood it at all. Uh, But, but all of this cropped up and a question was asked to me when I was having breakfast at Tudor's the other day. Uh, if you have a fight between two kids and some kids defending himself, are they both disciplined? Are they both, if one kid's defending himself and he strikes back, is he disciplined? So we're we're taking away the right self defense from a kid. We've had that question for yes. parents this year. We yeah. definitely have. And what'd you all tell them? Uh, well, it, we look at most of the time there's video. Okay. And so, like in one case, we had a kid who he's walking down the hall. Kid attacks him from behind. He's 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 punching him from behind. The kid's got a cup in his hand. He bends over and sets it down while he's being hit. And he just grabs the kid, holds him, and takes him down to the ground and holds him down until the teacher gets there. We we didn't look at that as fighting back, that he was just protecting him. We overturned that suspension. So we overturned yeah, well. it. And then in another one where uh, a kid uh, walks up to a kid in the hallway and just starts hitting them, and the other kid turns around, there, and then they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe swinging, even though the other kid got the upper hand, then, uh, yeah, they're both getting yeah. They both got the same punishment. I have a problem with not that. You have a problem with that? Now, I was going to say, when I, when I was at the high school, my always was if, if, if you have two mutual combatants, that means if you're both throwing, if you're throwing punches, then you're a combatant. Now, if someone like he said, if I just bend over and somebody punches me, I go down and I grab him and nothing's going on, I am I was assaulted. So, But if you hit him back, you have two you, mutual you're, combatants, that's you're a fight. Put, you're yeah, fighting. That's a fight. Okay. If, if I'm just, like Don said, if I'm grabbing he somebody and getting on. Was, Holding him on yeah. the ground, he got one arm out and he's swinging over his back and hitting. But the other kid never yeah. threw a punch. That's he what was I just Trying to hold him down, and then once the teacher got there, broke him up. And I think we did that through again it's based on policy twenty three seventy three. I just have a problem. Some guy comes through this room and he takes a swing at me. I'm going to swing back. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to oh, go. Well, I'm going to hug you to somebody gets here. <laughs> That's uh, that's 2024. You know, 1970 the difference. Hmm. I, I, I'm I'm not in favor of fighting, but I'm not also in favor of. Right. Versus the kid. Who was taken up for himself. One might give one day or two days. And one might give. Some but there's some kind of punishment. There's a punishment. 
There is a punishment, whatever, even if you're defending yourself. Oh, and then, you know, I've had this conversation many times that, you know, my, a lot of times my, my daddy and my principal hat conflict. Yes, you know, don't they? They do. Well, when I was principal, yes. if I could determine that somebody was defending themselves, I didn't I, punish them. I didn't punish them as bad, and sometimes not at all. Well, or happens, they stayed in the office. It happens in, in the public. I, uh, when some, you know, we're punching and I hurt you and you hurt me, both at fault, right? I mean, you can both. You, 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 know you read you know, the punishments. Yeah. Um, is, is, is the same. It's the same. I think that's the easy way out for an administrator if you've got two people that's fighting, fighting and you don't have to really determine who's doing what. I think that's a cop out, well, quite frankly. We live in a world where everybody's got a camera on 24 7. We've got Sometimes. cameras all over Sometimes. the place. Sometimes. Well, we've got cameras back, in the hallway. We've got cameras every place. We can determine who was who the aggressor yeah. is, as opposed to who a who was just taking is. Take, take, and, being, and, and with a couple, with the exception of a couple incidents, our administrators have done a pretty good job this year of, the term, of discerning. But by our policy, we're going to punish them both. Yeah, yeah, we are. Well, that's that's forty three seventy three. We're it's been like that for a it, while. Yeah. I mean, I not, do you have any leeway in that forty three seventy three policy? Well, you have you have the leeway to determine. Okay, you know we he come up and attacked you from behind, and you turn around and was wailing back on him when we told you to stop. You did. This one didn't stop. He kept coming at you. Well, this one gets a little stiffer penalty. Right, that's right. That's the, that's their leeway. But if there's no administrator there, and some and it happens in the hallway, and somebody discovers it like a teacher or something, but that's... But we're still, cool. when you say one gets a little stiffer penalty than the other, you're penalizing them both. And one guy was just minding his business, business and got, a got hit. Uh, that's what I'm I not sure that's, I would that's a good policy, but we ought to think about that uh, a little bit. I'm, I just, I would hate to think that we're not allowing people to defend to take, themselves. Yes. So what are you going to do with the... The girl is getting attacked and she pulls her pepper spray out and defends herself. By this definition, she we suspend her. Well, but she's allowed to have the pepper spray. But she's 16. But can, well, but she's but taking she, aggressive action yeah. and fighting back. Can she defend I mean, herself? By, with the, the by our policy, we're going to suspend her. Yeah, we're going. She's going to have the same, or same or a little less. She won't get expelled. Yeah. Well, she may not get expelled, but you may wind up suspended her for a few days, just like the kid defending right. himself. I mean, it doesn't that exactly doesn't make any sense. sense. No, it really doesn't make. Well, there's several things in policies. <laughs> well, I, I, Especially I, if they come from the mean, State Department. Mean, we need to do a little better with that. So we I, need I, to think about it. It starts at the State Department. It starts at the State Department. And you know that, what? I don't think it ever will. I don't. I don't think I don't so. think that I don't think it is a week. I think those are things that we can address and we can do stuff. I, I just not going to blame it on the higher ups. I think we can address that with some common sense of our own. But anyway, I won't be the dead horse. But that particular policy you all are telling me is OK. The weapons policy. I guess so. So I shouldn't be concerned about that at all. We shouldn't worry. All the state code. Well, I said, if you wanted to change something, you'd have to go back on 30 day review <laughs> and it'd come back to us again. But, but it doesn't agree with the days. state policy. They, they won't accept it. Right. Right. You can't go against it. No, them. you can't. Now, bear in mind, we can by this you. policy, we're allowing someone over 21 years of age to bring a gun on school property, property. if it's concealed. I guarantee it's happening. And if, oh, if they're. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure you're right. Well, but, I, 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 but it, it may be happening. But we're saying here when we pass this policy, it, it meets is. our approval. I think, yeah, and I think uh, oh. probably the reason the legislature did that. So if somebody, uh, if a, a God forbid, a shooter with an active shooter would come into a building and an employee, oh, I got a gun out of the car, slipped out of the building, got their gun out of the car and come back in and try to protect everybody else. Well, I'm not sure this policy allows that. Well, um, and there, probably a lot of people wouldn't do it, but 
they have the ability to yeah. do that. They would have the right to do that. Well, I won't beat a dead horse if I'm the only one that's feeling that way, but uh, that was that was my primary concern with the policies last week. So, any other discussion? If not, I make a motion that we approve. Wilson makes a motion. <laughs> Second. Second. Snyder seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have unanimous 5 0. Brings us to the finance section. Do I, any discussion on finance? Motion and a second to approve. Martin makes the motion. I'll second. Burns seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Unanimous. Brings us personnel section. Blue sheet. Blue sheet. I think we're sort of concerned personnel. Um, on the summer enrichment program, I see they're hired from July 1 to August the 2nd, and the students come from July 8th to August the 1st. I mean, I understand preparation time, but the bus drivers are also have that schedule, don't they? Of July 1 to August the 2nd. Does that mean they're going to be on duty for a week and something well, after? We have the holidays there that they're not. Because uh, July yeah, 1 is on. Uh, yeah, that whole week there, there's no. No school. I want to start the fiscal year. The fourth and fifth are holidays. Right. Fourth, so they're right. so they get paid for them. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Wednesday would be their prep. They get one day of prep. Yeah, is that what you're saying? That's right. But then they get paid the next two days because it's up. Uh, it's in. So the everybody gets calendar. one day of prep. Yes. Uh, all summer original yeah. preps. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? If not. I'll ask for a motion to approve personnel. So who, second. Who, who made the motion? Second. Snyder made the motion. Wilson seconds. Yeah. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. Brings us to the comments and concerns section. Yep, I saw that. Be starting on that slip repair. Um, I mean, that'd be an expensive endeavor. It'd be a permanent, yeah, 100 year fix. We won't be around in that one. No, we won't see it. I might retire by then. <laughs> well, hey, we might be off the board by then. I have a question about the memorandum of understanding with Ranger and the LCOC. I know we talked about that several times. Yep. Have they ever sent something back? Anything. He's not saying anything back to me yet. Better hurry up or somebody else yeah. is going to understand with us. But I have to understand something pretty soon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he hasn't seen yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, yeah, we're going to start thinking about salvaging what we're going to salvage yeah. out of that building because yeah. yeah. school's out. Now, that's what I'm uh, we had that discussion with him. It's me, Jerry, Don was in on it, and Austin. I uh, believe we we had that uh, discussion with uh, Bill Carpenter, and he. Uh, I'll 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 send him a send a him message, a little note. He but, needs to uh, do it by a certain he time. He want to get a uh, MOU that they had done with another entity. Send it to us. We were going to put out what our thoughts on it. Send it to Leslie. She sent it back, and then we can get it all squared away. Okay. As soon as we get our stuff out of there and get this approved. They, that's the sooner Ranger can get that facility. So we need to get that moving as soon as possible. Our date on it's August 1. We did we did decide on that. August 1. Yeah. Okay. To get things, everything that's good that's, out there. From August 1, it goes to them. Well, that, there. that, that's that's two months. So I'd like to do that sooner than that if we could. Yeah. So you've got June and July to work with here. Well, we're still, we're, we're, we don't want the building to sit empty. Yeah. So where that gives us time to, like, you know, you can't, as far as like oh, the technology yeah. stuff, you can't go in there and just rip that stuff out. That's got to be meticulously yeah. taken out. Yeah. So we didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves into saying, okay, you got to have it out by the, by this date certain and end up having to go in there and halfway do something yeah. rather than salvage what we actually need that can be yeah. reused. Okay. Yeah. As long as y'all know it needs to be done as soon as possible. Also about the... Uh, There's a lot of old people up there need these. That's right. Donna, Donna Martin's already got her lunch. <laughs> I know we had discussed that, that Miss Stone was going to contact the parents and see where those children were. I had that discussion Friday. 
Okay, so, okay, so she has not done that yet. No, she has not. And so we have people that are still saying, well, I was going to go to uh, Hearts, now I decided I'm going to go to West Devil. Okay. But, but so they'll do that pretty well, soon, so these yeah. parents will know some kind of schedule. Yeah. Have a lot of them change their minds. Yeah, because it looked like both of them were going to go to Hearts, but we've, we've had a Shift lately of kids going to West Hamlin. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it about half and half or probably, probably probably half half. I'd say probably now it is. Okay. All right. Any well, other discussion? No, but I think that's good that we're giving them that choice. Do too. No, Instead no. of just saying you gotta go here and you gotta go here. Jeremy, you're on. They get to have that choice. What's that? Adjourn. Does anybody want to make a motion? Oh, I adjourn the motion that we adjourn. We'll select the motion. Either seconds. And I'll vote time at 7 30 p.m. <laughs> All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? And we are adjourned. Good meeting. Good meeting.